in the bin. The tip is a pen. Special pen. Special? Let me see. Goodness, no. No, just borrow. I will show you magic pen. Yes. Like this. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> it's contagious. <laughs> Can you explain why it has sound? Can I what now? Why it has sound? Why it has sound? <laughs> Ask a chemistry teacher. No, please. <laughs> Goodness, what's wrong with you today? Is today your long day? <coughs> How many hours of classes? Oh. Seven. Mm -hmm. I think I understand. Right, uh, Kirchhoff's laws. I believe I spelled Kirchhoff's. Are we ready? Next lesson. <coughs> Haven't a clue because um, Kirchhoff has never complained to me before about how I'm pronouncing his name. So if it, if you tell me it's Kirchhoff. Cough, cough, cur, cur. I believe that. Um, I might have spelled his name wrong. I think it has two C's in it, or maybe two O's, or two F's as well. I don't know. Um, I have to double check. Not that it's important. Uh, Kirchhoff's laws. So these are absolutely important, great laws for solving circuit problems. Really, really useful. And you'll see that now with a couple of examples. So uh, we'll get started here on Kirchhoff. Right. Yes, it's two H's in Kirchhoff. You've got two H's and two F's. So Kirchhoff has two laws. Kirchhoff. What? <laughs> How would you like me to say it? No, no. Kirchhoff. Kirchhoff. Because it has an O, so I'm like Kirchhoff. Kirchhoff. You will pronounce it? Kirchhoff. Because it has an off, and then I'm saying curve chop. Curve chop. Like you change the curve part of the off. I don't get it. It's too advanced for me. It's too advanced for me, yeah. Curve chop's first law. So, uh, curve chop has two laws. First one, the junction law. It says that. At any junction in an electric circuit, the sum of the currents flowing into that junction is equal to the sum of the currents flowing out of the junction. Uh, as a formula, it means this, uh, but as a diagram, let me explain what that means. So just before you write that down, what Kirchhoff said, uh, let's imagine you have a junction here. Uh, we'll just have one coming out. So if this one is current I1 and this one is I2, these two are going in and this one is coming out. If you have the ones going in as a plus, so plus I1, plus I2, and the one coming out as a minus, minus I3, the total should be zero. Which when you think about it makes perfect sense because when I take this to the right, I get I3 equals I1 plus I2. And this is nothing new. We've been talking about this uh, since we started current. But just to give it more of a mathematical con uh, framework, it says add up all the currents at the junction and you'll get zero, where plus is in and minus is out. In the exam, uh, they sometimes ask for the definition of uh, Kirchhoff's first law. Um, you can state it in both forms. However, if you state it this way, you must clearly explain what the symbols mean. This symbol means sum. This means at one junction. And this means currents with plus as in and minus as out. Okay. Um, and the reason this is true is because it's due to the conservation of charge. Meaning, if two charges go in, then the two charges must come out that you don't lose charge. 
Sometimes I ask you what is the reason for Kirchhoff's first law and the reason is because charge is conserved, it is unchanged. The total charge remains the same, just like with energy. Some at a junction. Oh. <coughs> mm -hmm. The whole box is the definition. That is L I. That is I, capital I for current. Uh, I meaning like current one, current two, current three. Also, just to be clear, it's only your maths that's due tomorrow. Some <laughs> students were confused about this. Anybody confused about this? No. No. no? Okay. Um. Your physics coursework will begin on Wednesday, and then you'll have two weeks to do it. Tomorrow? It'll begin, meaning uh, you can start it tomorrow. Yeah, but it's today. Yes, I'm, there's no way of me knowing when you... Well, I suppose I could know when you downloaded it from Moodle, yeah. but that doesn't mean you'll start writing anything. Uh, so you'll have two weeks starting tomorrow after you submit the maths to do the physics essay. Just saying, but if you find out that I downloaded the physics behind hybrid cards three weeks ago, <laughs> yeah, okay. Of course, we're doing it. Yes, okay. <laughs> Accidental. All right. Do you have this now? Yep. Okay. So uh, I drew what that means already. So obviously, there's more than one law because you would never say Kirchhoff's first law if it was the only law. So you have Kirchhoff's second law. Kirchhoff's second law, also known as the loop law, says that the sum of the voltage around a network uh, is zero. Mathematically, the voltage around a loop is zero, and this is because energy is conserved. Now, before you write that down, or as you're writing it down, let me just draw what that means. So what that means is, uh, imagine you have a cell here, and you have one lamp here, one lamp here, one lamp here. And this we say is 12 volts. And this is a 6 volt, this is a 4 volt, and this is a 2 volt when you measure. Again, this is not surprising. 12 should equal 6 plus 4 plus 2. We've talked about this before. That voltage adds. So these use the voltage, whereas this provides it. So if you make these ones, the resistors, minuses, and the provider a plus, then you end up with 12 minus 6 minus 4 minus 2 equals 0. So again, this rule makes sense. If you add up the voltages in a loop, they add up to 0, where plus is for providers and minus is for consumers. Uh, that's what I mean here. Voltage adds up to zero. Again, plus go providing like a cell minus using like a lamp. Okay.
long. Why did you do that? Who told you to do that? You. <coughs> no. <coughs> Me. <laughs> Ooh, burn. Uh, right. Do you have this now? I think so. Yeah, I it. Did you? And had a quick nap afterwards. Great, okay. I told you. The old faithful is gone. The new sleepy fast has arrived. You want to see the dog? <laughs> On second thought. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, can we continue? You have this? Yeah. So, um, some advice before I do an example. Uh, don't forget, you still have this formula, V equals IOR which turns out to be a very useful formula for this lesson, V equals IR. In fact, it's very important for this lesson. Useful with the loop rule in particular. Second point, usually for problems involving Kirchhoff, you only need to use the junction rule once. Now, not always, but just usually for the exam. Next, often the loop rule is required twice in the exam. Not always, but usually. And if the loop goes the wrong way through a battery or resistor, then the voltage uh, increases. So, for example, uh, imagine you have um, a resistor here, and uh, you have um, a battery here, and the current is going this way. But if you make a loop that goes backwards through the resistor, instead of having a minus voltage, you'll have a plus voltage in the formula. And likewise, remember what happens here if this is 5 and this is 6, then how many um, volts do we have here? 11. 11. But if we're going the wrong way, like if there's one like this, and then there's one like this. So we are going uh, around here. One. This is going the wrong way. So it subtracts the voltage. So wrong way means increase or, well, subtract, dependent. You can choose any loop. However, it's easier for me, at least, to use the loop that has a cell in it because I find it easy to start with the cell and go with the flow. I'll definitely need to give you an example to explain all this. So we'll have a look at our first example of Kirchhoff now. And uh, we're going to do one that we've done already, but I want to show you that you get the same answer. So if you can draw this circuit, please. Got that drawn? Can I sleep like him? One day, when you're as good as him. Oh no, wait, yeah, no, go ahead, sleep. <laughs> <laughs> We're only for like five seconds because I'm about to do this. Drawn? Okay, wakey up time. Now, we'll draw this. So, um, what's the resistor on the top? Look, leave him alone. He's a special student, okay? Why? <laughs> no, we don't talk about it, okay? Right. Um, this here is 5, this one here is 1 ohm, 2, two 3 and 4. Okay, in red I'll draw the current. So, 
it starts off here, there's a current, and I'll call this I1. And this current moves along, and here it was also I1 as well, previously. However, what happens when it reaches this junction? It splits. Some of it goes this way, and some of it goes this way. We don't know how much. So we'll call this one I2, and this one I3. Yes? It moves along here, and then rejoins back to form I1. Likewise, this moves along here, and rejoins back here to form I1. We have two junctions, here and here. If we use the junction rule here, we get I1 goes in, and what goes out? I2 and I3. If we use the junction law here, what goes in? And out? You realize that this is the same <coughs> equation. That is why I was saying often you need the junction rule only once. So this is no good to us because we have it already here. We have only one equation, but there's three unknowns. So we must make two more equations. We can't use the junction rule anymore. It's used up. We have to use the loop rule. How many loops can we make? We have a few choices. We can, yeah, we can make one loop here, or we can go one loop this way, or we can make an outside loop. My advice is always to include the cell in the loop, although you don't have to. So let's go with this loop first. We start off with the 5. So what's my voltage when I start at 5? Five? 5. And then as I move along the loop, what happens here? I yeah, do I use, do I gain or lose voltage? Lose. lose. Do I know the voltage here? No. But I can use the formula V equals <coughs> I or. Do I know the I? Yes. Yes. And do I know the or? Yes. So what's the voltage here? Minus 3 I3. 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 As I continue, I lose more voltage. What do I lose here? 4 I3 equals 0. Let's make a loop going up this way. So again, I start with the 5. And then when I hit this one, I lose how much? And then the next one is just 1 I2. And this will equal 0. So you realize, oh, I have three equations now. And actually these two, I can solve them. Because I can just write that as... Uh, oh, sorry, that should have been a, a 1, shouldn't it? No. Oh, 2. No, that's right. That one should have... Oh, no, that's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, so actually this is very easy to solve because I can change this into 5 minus 7 I3 equals 0. I can change this one into 5 minus 3 I2 equals 0. So I get I2 equals 5 over 3. I3 equals 5 over 7. And if I take these and put them back into the first one... I can get I1, uh, which I'll get now. Uh, 44 over 21. Why do you say always amps, amps, amps. Yeah? Why do you, why do you say always try to include the voltage? It's just a tip. It's not necessary. It's secret. How Trick of the trade. How does it have it kind of focuses your mind on a loop, where to start and end. Um, nearly finished. Last thing to do is to get the voltages. So let's get the voltage around this one. What's the formula, did we say? We yeah. said V equals I or 1. What's I? Uh, this will be I2, which is 5 over 3 multiplied by 1 volts. V2? will be 2 times I2. Yeah, so that will be 10 over 3 volts. V3 will be I3 times 3, which will be 15 over 7. And finally, volts. And finally, V4 will be 4 times I3, which is 20 over 7 
volts. So I found my three currents and my four voltages and I already know the four resistors. So I have absolutely everything I need about this circuit. So, yeah. How did you get the 20 point, uh, this 20 over 7? Yeah. yeah, B equals I OR. What's the I here? It's uh, I tray, which is this one. And what's the OR? It's oh. 4. So 4 times this is 20 over 7. 4 times 5? Yeah, it's funny, but like, why is, why is the current like 3? Why aren't they on the same thing? Huh? Why is the current the same? Here? It's current side 3. And uh, what about when it gets to the 4 resistor? Oh, it's still like, it's still like 3, because remember we said current in series. Oh. It's the same. So the current here, the current all the way here has to be the same. It only changes when it re-enters a junction with another current. It will increase because it joins up with this current. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Yes. But what about the, the, equation, the third equation? The third equation that you could have made won't give you anything new. The third <coughs> equation, um, if you want to know what it is, I'll write it down as soon as you got this. Uh, as Farang said, there's one more loop we could have used which is the outside loop. We'll see what that makes in a moment. Please write this down. I know, but you have physics now. I won? Ma I hope I didn't make a mistake. I used this formula. Uh, yeah, I put I2 and 3 into this. Yeah. Oh, no. Yay. No. Uh, what is it? 5 over 3 no, five plus 5 over 7. Mm no. That should have been... Sorry, God. Well, actually, it only changes this answer, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, should have been 50 over 21 And you might be thinking, man, that's so unfair. I'd so love that. And part of me is like, that would be a good idea. And part of me also thinks, no, students need to learn how to keep good notes. If I help them too much, then when they go into the real world of university, they'll just fall on their face. It's tough love. Because then the next thing will be, well, can't you just give us everything we need to know in a book? Can't you summarise everything in the book onto five pages? Can't you summarise everything in the book that we need for the exam on one page? Yeah. yeah. I actually had a teacher before. Yeah. Like you and you're probably that. thinking that teacher was much better than Stephen. No, and you're right. No, no, I never thought that. But no. now you're thinking it. Well, yes. what I was thinking, like, like we have the definitions in our book. Yeah. But then if we get like a booklet like with... So, what... What you could do, Everything we have to memorize. this is a crazy idea, totally crazy, it's off the wall, oh, but what you could do is you could buy a copy book, go to the library with the other students, uh, take your notes, copy the definitions into your copy book, you might accidentally learn some of them as you're copying, uh, and then use that. Like I said, it's a crazy idea. No, no, but I mean, it might work. Uh, the physics, in fairness, for the physics exam, it's not definition heavy. Definitions are a minimum part of the exam. A far bigger part of the physics exam is problem solving like this. If you were to say how much, I would say 90% problem solving, 
10% definitions. You're wasting your time a little bit learning off definitions. Priority one is doing problems. Priority two is definitions. But there's a big gap between those priorities. Maybe it's different in chemistry. Maybe learning definitions is more important than chemistry. It's not super important in physics. Okay. Would, what would you say the percentage of chemistry definitions? Mm -hmm. no, definitely more than physics, but then you always mention like the definitions that are like that have been in the exam yeah. and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I it would be like a whole paper full of definitions or whatever, and then mm -hmm. like, three, four, five, and seven. No, no, uh, I'd be 90%, 10%. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Can we look up? Fuan was asking me about the outside loop. So let's start. Um, we'll start with the one here. So do I use or lose voltage here? Lose. Uh, how much do I lose? So we'll start at the one and we'll go to the left. So I lose the voltage. How much do I lose? I or. What's I here? Uh, I2, isn't it? So it's. Oh, well, we'll pretend we don't have the answers. We'll go back to the question. Uh, minus 1i2. Now, let's continue around the loop. What happens here? Do I use or lose? Sorry, do I gain or do I lose? Gain. Gain because? Because you're going backwards. That's it. So, it'll be a plus 4i3. No, no, this is i2. This part here is I3. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, if I get here, do I gain or do I lose? Gain. gain. Uh, so that's plus 3 I3. I3. And finally, when I make it to the end of the loop here... Minus. Yeah, minus... Minus what? 2 I3. And this should equal... Yeah. 0. So you can say 4 I3 plus 3 I3 should equal I2 plus 2I2. Two two. So you get 7I3 equals 3I2. Or you can say 3I2 minus 7I3 equals 0. Um, and that is right, but that is more difficult than the other two because here I could directly solve, here I could directly solve, whereas this one is simultaneous. But it's still correct. If you took your answers for I2 and I3 and put them in, you will get zero. Let's check. What did I say I2 was? Um, I over 3. And what was I3? I over 7. 5 over 7, was it? Mm. So this is 15, oh no, that's Oh, of course, that's 5 minus 5, which is 0. So, it's still correct, it's still right, but it's less useful. This is the reason I gave you my tips. Starting up the cell, going with the flow, um, using the junction rule once and the loop rule twice. I'm trying to give you tips to get to the answer as quick as possible. But uh, taking different formulas, you'll get the right answer. It just maybe be a little bit harder. Are you looking for a pen? I'm looking for you. Me? Yeah, well, I'm looking for a favour. Uh oh. What do you want? I'll talk to you inside, yeah. All right, okay. Right, but I don't have much money with me today. No, it's not money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not money. Well, it's let me see money. how I can help you. Um, let me just put a question up here. So, um, here's one for you to try. I'd like you to try to make the equations at A and B. You don't need to solve them, just form the equations, okay?
Okay, were you able to form the equations? Is that a yes or a no? Great. So, what is the equation at B? Yep. I two equals I three. Minus I three equals zero. I know, but I prefer this, please. Okay, did you write that down? What Swang says? Yes. So not convincing. Uh, did you? What did you write down? Uh, minus sixteen. No, she didn't say anything about sixteen. What did you write down for A? We're not awake. We're not awake. Right. Are we listening? Yes. yes. Look. What's going in at B? Um. I1 and I2. What's coming out at B? I3. So it's I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals zero. Okay. Lee. Give me the equation for B here. The junction at E here. Now you see you're not listening. What is it? Come on. One. Have you got it? What's going into the junction? Come on. Wait, 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 go. I three. So straight away you have I three. And what's coming out of the junction? If you think it's going, it goes this way and it goes this way. I two equals zero. Okay. This is A. This is B. Part C. What have you noticed about these two equations? Yeah, it's the same. So do you need both of them? No. No, so one of them can be deleted. Right, use the loop rule around A, B, E, F. A, B, E, F. Make a loop rule here. I will give you one minute to write this equation down and then I'll ask someone. Loop here, please. Please note the total here is 12 and the total here is 6. Uh, this is a 12 and this is a 6. I'm not saying 12, 12. I'm saying total 12, total 6. Make the loop A, B, E, F. A, B, E, F. But I prefer them this way. Both 
No, no, just do A B E F. You've done that? Okay. Did you write A B E F loop? Okay, Fuan is going to give us the answer for A B A B E F. Go ahead, Fuan. Yes. Minus four I one minus sixteen I T equals zero. Correct. What did you get? I didn't get the Ah, you just did the four. Yeah. All right. Uh, so. Uh, yes. Um. Uh, what if I uh, put the twelve uh, volts equal to the four I and? For one already asked me that. I said I preferred equal to zero. Yeah. So we have. 12 minus V here, and V is I OR, so what's the I here? I1, and what's the OR? 4, so it's minus 4 I1, and then here is minus what? 16 I3 equals 0. I, one type of I, so that no, no, it doesn't always work as nicely as that. Not in this case. E, use the loop rule C, B, E, F. C, B, E, F. Get the loop rule here. What? Be strong. It's better for my health. It's less stress for me. Me too. Yeah, but if you're asleep, I'll feel so sad. Why? Because who will I talk to? <laughs> I don't talk to him. He talks to me. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk to me, not to you? It's more balanced. Okay, have you made this one? Yeah. Alright. So I will go, Andrew, have you made this one? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Where's I don't see any equation. <laughs> <laughs> it's mentally. Alright, mentally. So mentally give us the answer then for this one. Well, would be 6B. Just 6 is fine, yeah. <laughs> 6 minus. Yep. 4I2. Yep. Uh, minus yep. 16I3. Yep. Yeah. Equals 0. There we go. So we have four, uh, not four, sorry, six minus four I two minus sixteen I three equals zero. Okay, next one is the loop around the outside, A, B, C, D, E, F. This loop around the outside. Now, before you write it down, my tip is to start at the cell or the battery and to start at the bigger one. So you should start your loop at 12, 12 and go with the flow. So is that up or down? Oh, oh, oh. oh, okay. Try to make this one now. And then I'll ask one of you for the answer. So we have to get the big loop. Got it? Okay. Lee, give me the answer. I just want the equation.
five seconds. Oh, my. Give me the equation. Going so well, going so well. Uh, Twelve minus four I one. Started so well. Uh, Yahoo, give me the equation, please. Twelve. Yeah. Minus four I one. Yeah. Because this one is going the wrong way. Yeah, so you could. I was going to say minus 16. Where are we getting this minus 16 from? No, 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 no. no. One? Give it a try. 12. Oh, okay. Hey, you had your chance. It's one's turn now. 12 minus 4, I won. Yeah. I see the big dead right. Okay, fair enough. 12 minus 4, I won. Yeah. Four I two. Yeah. Minus three. Yeah. No. Yes. No. Plus six. Plus no. Minus eight. This is the wrong way. Mm. It's the wrong way. It's the positive with the positive. Yeah. The battery is backwards. Oh. Uh. Right, so we'll write that down. Twelve. Minus 4i1 plus 4i2 uh, minus 6 equals 0. So we have one equation, but straight away the second equation is useless to us. We have two equations. Three equations, four equations. We have too many equations. We don't need to use all of them. We just need to use three of them. Well, we definitely want to use this one. So the question is, which one should we keep and which one should we throw away? Which would be the easiest way to solve these? What ones would we use? One. You're thinking this one? No. It doesn't really matter so much. They're all about the same level of difficulty. Um, this one has 1 and 3 in it. This one has 2 and 3. This one has 1 and 2. This one has 1 and 3. There's no obvious one to keep and no obvious one to get rid of. So I might as well just keep the first two and forget about the last one then. Not that it matters. We can use any tree. So uh, we'll go with that. So let me just write them down again. You have I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals 0. Here, if I just take these to the right, I get 4I1 plus 16I3 equals 12. And this one here, I'll take these to the right as well, and I'll get 4i2 plus 16i3 equals 6. Now, this is okay, but I can clean this one up, and I can clean this one up. I can clean this up by dividing by 4, and here, just by 2. So now I have I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals 0. And here I have I1 plus 4I3 equals 3. Thank you. And then here I have uh, 2I2 plus 8I3 yeah, equals 3. So these are my equations to solve. So let's have a look at solving this together. Can I move to the right? Yeah, so I'll just put these up here. Right, so 
Before I solve this, you need to plan what you're going to do. So, my tip, my trick, my secret here, is you should pick the letter which is in three of them. So what is the only letter that's in all of them? I3. I3. And cancel that. So if I want to cancel the I3 here, I need to multiply this one by 4. But if I want to cancel it here, I would need to multiply this by 2. So just to make it easy, I want to make all of these the same. So multiply this one by 8. Multiply this one by 2 and this one by 1. So now you can get I1, 8I1 plus 8I2 minus 8I3 equals 0. Here you would get 2I1 plus 8I3 equals 6. And here 2I2 plus 8I3 equals 3. Now how do I cancel the I3s here? Do I add or subtract my equations? add because they're already opposite and here how can I cancel them oh, subtract right. yeah so let's do that so if I add them 8i1 plus 2i1 10 i1 8i2 plus no i2s eight I two. minus 8i3 plus 8i3 cancel uh, 0 plus 6, 6. Here, let's add 2i1 and no i1s. Sorry, subtract 2i1. No i2s minus 2i2. Minus 2i2. 8i3 minus 8i3. 6 minus 3. 3. Divide this by 2 and divide this one by nothing. What, what is that, this 10 i1? 10i1 plus 8i2. Okay, you've done this with me in math class. Um, what's the best way to solve this one? Um, I will multiply this one by 4. Yes. So now I get 10i1 plus 8i2 equals 6. 8i1 minus 8i2 equals 12. Now, what do I do to solve here? I'll add them, yeah. So I left with 18i1 equals 18. So i1 equals 1. Now, now that I have i1, I can put that in here and I can get i2. So i2 will be, let me see, 2 minus 3 is minus 1, minus a half. Now minus is okay, I'll explain why in a moment. And finally, to get I3, I3 would just be I1 plus I2. I1 plus I2. 0.5 amps. So, is, is, um, is there a value that's always a common argument? Like, I3 was an argument? No, because you could have like I1 and I2. And then this one could have I2 and I3 in it. And then the last one could have I1 and I3 in it. In those situations, um, you could... Yeah, you could substitute. Um, it depends. Let me see. You could cancel the... Actually, um, th no, these ones are actually better because... If you minus these, you cancel the I2s and you'd be left with I1s and I3s. And you can just put that with this one. Yeah. Anyways, what is the meaning of the minus? The minus means the arrow is the wrong way on the diagram. So when we look at the picture here, this I2 is actually negative, meaning we've drawn the arrow the wrong way. So the current is not flowing this way, it's actually flowing the other way, which means the current is moving down here. So which way are the electrons flowing here? If the current is moving down, which way are the electrons going up?
Yes, Farron. Yeah, I think I made a mistake. Do you, do you see where it says to solve? Yeah. Could you go right above it? No, Yes. You're not going to ask me something where I realized there was a mistake at the beginning and you wait until the end to tell me. <laughs> it's not going to be that, is it? I wrote it's a mistake. Oh, no. All right, I go on. I wonder. Yeah? 12 minus 4i minus 16i2. I3. I3. Uh, I3, I yeah. yeah. When you put it over there, you have positive 4, positive 16. Yeah, positive equals 12. 12. Yeah, because these two move to the right and the 12 stays. So 12 is positive, and these two go to the right to become positive as well. Did I make a mistake, Wong? I'm going to go back. Go back. Yeah. 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 Well, you know how we can check? We can use our buddy, the calculator. Watch this, and prepare us to have your mind blown. Uh, mode... Fifty. Yeah, you are right. You are right. One. Fifty. No. We need one that has three in it. Oh. Two. X, Y, Z is like I1, I2, I3. So mode 52. So we have one. One. Minus one. Zero. Next one. One. Zero. Four. Three. Next one. Zero. Two. Eight. Three. I1 is. Dun, dun, dun. I2 is. I3 is. Um, can we do that real time? <laughs> you will not get full marks if you did, but you will still get some marks. So, for example, let's imagine this question I just did was nine marks. For example, if this was a nine <coughs> mark question, you would probably get six marks. But like if we add then like if we just curve like that, they got the these formulas and stuff. What what would happen in the exam? Just so you know, if this was a nine mark question, what would happen is you get a mark here, here, and here. That's three marks for making the three equations. Wait, you are wrong. <laughs> but then so is the calculator. No. The formula. Now hang on, remember I got the formulas from the class, so. No, but you write the wrong formula. Did I? I? It's 16, I3. Yeah, but he's the driver. This one? Is this one, yeah? No, sorry, that one is that one. That yeah. one becomes that one, yeah. and that one becomes that one. We're happy with this? Yeah, yeah exactly. And then this one here is six. <coughs> you were saying? Yeah, it's right. <laughs> <laughs> what? Can I finish what I was saying? So if this was a nine mark question in the exam, for example, although it might not be nine marks, it might be only six marks. If it was a six mark question, you get two marks for forming the equations, two marks for this process, and then two marks for this at the end. Um, so if you skip that and use the calculator, you would still end up with four out of six. Yeah, but you know, you if you're running out of time at the end of the exam, you might as well get the two marks and get nothing. You know? Okay, I like this question in the exam. At first, I didn't like it when I first was teaching physics here, but now I really like this question in the exam. No? Nope. Oh. What? It's minus 3, not 3. Minus 3? The second. This one? Yeah. Okay, let me check. Is it minus 3? Yeah. Because if I take these to the right, it's positive, positive equals positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the math teacher. Yeah. 
Anyways, if I, I don't think we've found a mistake. If I did, <laughs> if I did make a mistake, it absolutely changes nothing about how you do this, which is what you're trying to learn right now. Right? But the answer is different. To what? Uh, is it possible you made a mistake? I tried to try, but no. I think she means that I'll tell you what. If you find my mistake, you can post it in the comment later. No, I and I will give you a plus one like to your comment. <laughs> no. Plus one and a heart? <laughs> Deal. Right. No, I'm sure you have Okay, okay, fine. I made a mistake. You will find it and you will post it on the video. And we'll all look at it and we'll... Guys, if she finds a mistake, we're all liking the comment, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. It's yeah. It's not have anything to like. Yeah, you just say, the mistake is at time 21 minutes. You forgot the minus. And we'll all go, like. <laughs> Yes. And then you'll be famous. And then you'll be famous, exactly. Yeah, nice okay. Yeah. Now, I want you trying these for a few minutes. Um, this lesson usually takes a double class because of the maths in it. But it's really, really good question in the exam. Because if you're patient, take your time and be careful with your maths, you can easily get your full marks here. Because it's really, this is more like a maths question than a physics question, right? You're forming the equations to solve. So, it's a maths one. Um, you can start with any question. Maybe you want to start with number three because it has the diagram. That's fine. But I want you to try to do one of these before you go. So, choose any one to do now. Let me stop the video.